Hey guys, Level Cap here, and today I'm going to be talking about the Heavy Assault, what I've learned about playing with the Heavy Assault, and uh, some good ways to start leveling it up. I think it's one of the most effective classes and one of the most useful classes in Planetside 2. Now what does the Heavy Assault bring to the table that makes it different than other classes? Well first of all, it has a shield ability, and I'm not just talking the little blue bars of shield that every class has in recharges. It has an additional player activated third shield. Now this shield can be one of three different shields, the nanite mesh generator, the adrenaline shield, or the resistance shield. Uh, there's been a little bit of debate about which one to use, but I think I figured out which shield is the best hands down. Now I've conducted a test between the resistance shield and the nanite mesh generator. I didn't bother looking at the adrenaline shield just because I believe uh, it requires you to keep killing enemies to recharge your shield and I think that's going to sort of force a bad style of gameplay. Okay this footage here is going to demonstrate how much damage I take from one pistol shot from the manticore without shields. It's done almost 8 bars of damage. Now when I turn on the resistance shield and get shot in the same spot it seems to do about four bars of damage, so approximately half of the damage is being mitigated when your resistance shields are active. Now I'm gonna get back to the test in a second, but I just wanna to talk to you about what the difference is between the nanite shield and the resistance shield. The resistance shield, when it's activated, has a specific amount of time that it can stay charged based on your power core. Now when you get shot, it will reduce the damage. It will mitigate damage, like you just saw there, to approximately 50%. It doesn't last very long and you run slower while it's active, but it will stay active even while you're being shot. Now the Nanite Mesh Generator Shield actually absorbs damage rather than you taking uh, a reduced amount of damage. The problem with the Nanite Shield is that when you get shot, it reduces your power core, so if you take a shot or two, your shield will go off. It'll absorb the amount of damage it's meant to absorb and then it will no longer function. Now let's watch the nanite shield in work here while I get shot about 10 times from a pistol. It takes me down to a pretty low health bar. It seems I have about 6 bars of health left over. Now let's see the exact same test with resistance shields. It takes me down to about 8 bars of health. So the resistance shield ultimately if you're going from full health to no health uh, will absorb more damage than the nanite shield generator. So not only does resistance shield generator absorb more damage overall, but nanite shield generator has a big problem. When you run low on energy, it absorbs less damage. So say you activate your shield generator and you watch the power go down like it is here to about a third, then we conduct the exact same test as before. I get shot, I actually get killed. I don't have six bars of health left over because the shield generator absorbs less. Now that power bar uh, falls very quickly once you activate it. So sometimes you'll activate your nanite shield generator thinking that there's going to be action around the corner. You misjudge it, you still have it active. Then somebody engages when your shield's almost depleted and it will really not absorb any damage. I mean it'll absorb a tiny bit but it's almost uh, worthless in that respect. That's where the resistance shield becomes so much more useful than the nanite shield generator. Now even if you have a tiny bit of power left with your resistance shield and you activate it, it will still be absorbing about half the damage until it's done being active. So you can still absorb a lot of damage even with a tiny bit of power with the resistance shield. This is my reasoning and my rationale for choosing the resistance shield over the nanite shield and uh, I think you guys should definitely go for resist shields once you have the certification points for it. Now let's talk about the other thing that makes the heavy assault unique from other classes. It's the only class that starts out with a really good anti-vehicle weapon, a rocket launcher. Now each uh, side has a different kind of rocket launcher to start out with, but for the most part they're all pretty much identical. They do considerable damage to armored targets. Now the starting rocket launcher is a dumb fire rocket launcher, meaning it's not going to lock onto your target, it's just going to fire in a straight line, well, straight line that arcs a little bit over distance, but you can upgrade to lock on rocket launchers at a later time, which will lock onto either ground vehicles, there's one that's specifically for ground vehicle lock-ons, and then there's one specifically for air vehicle lock-ons. Now sometimes you might think, well I don't really want to get an anti-air rocket launcher because there's plenty of battles that just don't have any air targets to shoot at. 
Well, if you buy the rocket launcher and then have a class configuration set up for it, and you're near, say, a deployed sender or a infantry ammo station, you can then quickly switch to your anti-air rocket launcher if you see some air in the area, fire some shots at it, if you take it down or at least thwart it and it uh, runs away, then you can switch back to your regular heavy assault setup. So that's one nice thing about having some of the lock-on rocket launchers. Uh, the lock-on ground launcher can be very useful for people in tanks that are being very good about dodging. Lightnings can be very hard to hit if there's a good driver. Also mag riders have the strafing ability so it can be very hard to take them out. That's one good thing about the lock-on ground launcher. Personally, I think I'll probably end up using the Dumbfire rocket launcher the most, just because uh, I can anticipate where people go, or if you get in close enough, you can hit them in the rear, causing maximum damage to armor. Now, the Heavy Assault class has access to light machine guns. Light machine guns are sort of like larger versions of assault rifles with extended magazines. Now, the gun that I'm using right now is the Pulsar LSW. I'm not going to really cover specific weapons too much in this video. I plan to cover those on individual videos, but I can tell you if you're playing Vanu and you get the Pulsar LSW, you will not be disappointed. I think this is possibly one of the best machine guns available for Vanu and it is absolutely devastating both in close quarters and long to medium range. Now for the new players out there, perhaps not a lot of cert points to spend into weapons, you know, you have to spend all your cert points in upgrading your infantry classes which is something I recommend doing before buying guns. Uh, don't worry, all your base machine guns are actually quite capable and I like them a lot. In fact, the basic Vanu machine gun is quite good also. So uh, don't worry about spending all your cert points on new guns. It's not gonna be game changing. I would say if you're really cert point strapped, then stick with the basic guns and use them. Use all your certs to upgrade your classes and vehicle abilities. And speaking of upgrading your classes, each class has a suit slot where you can upgrade different things like better shield capacitors, ammunition belts, flak armor, grenades, munitions pouch, or nano weave armor. Now for the heavy assault, I like to go with nano weave armor because one, it's cheap at the early levels, and two, it gives you increased health. The Heavy Assault is already a big sort of a tanker class with its special personal shield that can absorb a lot of damage. If you're using the Resistance Shield, which uh, reduces the amount of damage you take, uh, and if you have more health to go along with that, you can absorb a huge amount of damage. So I really like to put my points into Nano Weave Armor. You don't have to max it out in the beginning of the game. In fact, the first three levels are relatively cheap and you can get them quickly. If you can upgrade it all the way to four, that's great. Level five is unfortunately a thousand cert points, so that's something that you can do very, very late game when you really uh, have maxed out a lot of your other stuff. Heavy Assault does get the option for an anti-vehicle grenade or a concussion grenade, so you have uh, anti-vehicle or anti-personnel style grenades that you can mess around with. I haven't tried them out yet, personally um, I'm not that eager to try them out. The anti-vehicle grenade could be interesting, but you already have such a an anti good anti-vehicle weapon that I'm not like really hurting for something else to do massive damage to infantry. Something that you might want to take in your utility slot could be, say, a restoration kit. If you end up uh, going a little bit of lone wolf or you just find yourself away from a medic, using a restoration kit can be a great thing to keep you alive longer in the battle. I find that the Heavy Assault is one of the few classes that seems to have enough ammunition to really deal out a lot of damage over time, so chances are if you're a good player you can actually stay alive for a long time where the restoration kit will become quite useful. Now if you've ever played as the max class, you'll know that heavy assaults are not an infantry class to be taken lightly. Their rocket launchers can cause maximum damage to you. And as a heavy assault, when you see a max, you should know that it is your role, it is your uh, objective to take them out. A lot of other classes are just not as effective at taking out maxes, whereas you can uh, hit them with your rocket launcher and almost kill them in one shot. So this is something that uh, is another really big benefit of the heavy assault. You can really take on just about any vehicle or infantry unit that you come across on the battlefield. So that's it for my intro to the heavy assault class. I hope this gives you guys some good ideas about how to spend your cert points and how to be most effective with heavy assault. Perhaps what weapons that you want to go for eventually. Remember, spend your cert points on your class before upgrading your gun. 
Thanks for watching as always. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off. Thank you.